So just a quick disclaimer before I actually do start the video. Um, I may not be able to help you with some of the issues you will experience. But I will be able to guide you through how to set up your Kinect. No matter if it's an Xbox One Kinect or an Xbox 360 Kinect. But I will also let you know that this does also work with things like Slime VR and OO Track or PlayStation Move. But um, I don't really know those um, tracking solutions. So um, we're just going to be sticking with regular old Kinect and um, we're just going to go from that. So the first step is basically get yourself an Xbox One Kinect or an Xbox 360 Kinect. You also will need, and I mean will need, the power supply that lets you run it from mains power and your USB power. Because this ain't a regular USB. Um, like you can just plug straight in. The power supply for the Kinect, either one. Um, I really do, they, they do tend to fluctuate the prices of the power supply. So if you can get one at a decent price, then yes, cool. Uh, get yourself the power supply and get yourself the connect. I do recommend the 360 connect because it takes advantage of all three the camera the uh, depth sensor and the infrared sensor which is kind of required for doing things like this um, So now the next thing we need to do now what well, well, yeah, once you've got uh, got your connect of choice uh, You now need to install your SDK. So in this case, I've already got mine installed, but um, the one I require because I'm running the Xbox 360 Connect is SDK 1.8. You may also, depending if it will not, if it doesn't work the first time, there is also the Connect SDK Toolkit, um, which I run in the background of the app. So here you go. Uh, this is the SDK Toolkit. Um, oh, actually, it was already on. Oh no, sorry, never mind. Yeah, if it doesn't work, but you have the SDK installed, you can also install the SDK toolkit for your Kinect. Um, I think it's the same as well for the Kinect 2.0, but if not, just install SDK version 2 for your Kinect. Uh, well, for your Xbox One Kinect, but if you're running the 360 Kinect, install SDK 1.8. But if you notice that if you're gonna have problems in the future, Go ahead and install the SDK toolkit, run the toolkit, then run the program of your choice, and then everything should just work first try. I don't know if it's going to work the second time straight after, but if it doesn't, you may have to be con keep this running in the background. But yeah, if you already have your stuff installed, then we come to k2vr.tech or, or connect to VR, if you want to ever put that. And um, you're going to be greeted with this right here. This is the main web page. As you can see, they're showing you using the Kinect uh, for tracking. Which is not... It's actually not too bad. I mean, it gets the job done. Um, but yeah. Formerly, they were known as Kinect to VR. But now, they are now working on a new program called Amethyst. Um, but com if you've come from Connect to VR at one point and you've gone to something like Vibe Trackers or something, but you've then come back to Amethyst for a different reason, like experimenting or whatever, well, Connect to VR, you may notice that Connect to VR doesn't exist anymore, but Amethyst is now the replacement. And I will warn you, Amethyst um, tends to be slightly worse than Connect to VR at one point, but. You really won't notice much of a difference if you've literally just got to connect. Um, but this is more than enough for what you need to do. So just click get started. And then you want to click, if you have a Windows 10 or Windows 11 PC, what you, well obviously yeah, because that's the only operating systems you can really run VR on um, at the moment. But yeah, you want to click right here on installing Amethyst. And you can only download this from the Microsoft Store. So I'm going to click here. Or I'll always allow that and as you can see a little prompt comes over here from the Microsoft Store eventually Amethyst will show up there you go open source body tracking uh, just click the install button it may take a little bit but yeah after that you just click open go through the setup like usual because uh, I can't really show you the setup 
But um, yeah, once you get through the setup and um, everything's working, sometimes you may notice that you connect will immediately start working. Like you'll see the infrared lasers kick on, uh, the li the green light will stay solid on it, things like that. Or if you're running the Xbox One Connect, if I I can't remember, but if if I am correct, the solid Xbox light will come on, basically saying that the connect is uh, up and running. I think it's been a really long time since I've last used an Xbox One Connect. But yeah, basically now we've done all this part, and now the second part is um, just get your VR headset running. So obviously my program of choice, oh whoops, I did not mean to do that because my app was on a completely different window. Obviously Steam VR, um, if you're going to be running something like the Oculus app, I'd recommend you run the VRChat OSC uh, version. But if you're gonna be running Steam VR, click the Steam VR button and install the driver. Um, as you can see, it may take a little bit to mess around with Amethyst uh, to get it installed. But if I remember correctly, open up Steam VR, install Amethyst, and it should just work. Um, but as you can see, I need to um, get my VR headset running. So I'll be back. Alright, so as you can actually see, uh, when I launched SteamVR, um, Amethyst actually opened, and um, as you can see, everything's just started working, and it, for some reason, the toolkit didn't even have to be turned on, which is actually kind of uh, rare and kind of cool. But yeah, I'm going to have some things, and some things you have to remember is that um, the SD kit, uh, sometimes your connect will not see you depending on what clothes you wear. Now, I know that sounds weird, but what clothes I recommend you wear is um, you wear something nice and bright for your legs and something nice and bright for your shirt, and um, it should track it all right. But I am putting myself at a bit of a bottleneck here by wearing a black hoodie and um, some grey legs and uh, some slippers, which is definitely not ideal. As you can see, it's a bit weird, but if you wear something nice and bright and your connector can easily see you, then it is not going to be an issue. But as you can see, I am walking around and uh, the Kinect is happily tracking me. Now, I would recommend if you can, if you have a big, nice open area, you place the camera, well, the, the Kinect straight at you. But in my situation, because I only have a small area, I placed it a little higher than it should be, like right at the top, pointing down at me, but it looks like it's doing okay. I mean, it's not doing great, but there is something there. And plus, I'm going to move my shoes out of the way because it's going to get confused with them. So now, the next thing we're going to do is connect the trackers. Uh, let's make sure my audio is actually coming through properly, which they are. So now we've done that, and I look here. Trackers should be around here somewhere. Oh, actually, they're right on me. Because it's seen me before, and it knows where to put them. So you can see here. Oh, looks like my left controller died. I'll have to sort that out later. But see there? And you hear? Yeah, I'm going to have to realign that. But yeah, basically to do a calibration, I recommend doing a manual calibration. So quick calibrate. Ooh. Manual. These are your controls on how to calibrate right here. So, left, right stick. Yep, blah, blah, blah. If you can understand all of them, then cool. Close down the menu because you can't really do it in the menu. Uh, but annoyingly enough, I have to put a new battery in. So, um, I'll be back. All right, we are now back in business. I now have, as you can see under the window, I, I got both my controls working again. So, what we need to do is uh, I'm just going to click on here, but as you can see, sorry about the view, I am currently using Steam Link on the Quest, which I found better than the Oculus app, which, by the way, it will perform better uh, without the Oculus app, so this will be a massive ben performance benefit for uh, Amethyst. So let's close down the menu, and I'm going to leave, in fact, actually, I am going to leave the Steam VR home. Maybe I'll disable that. But, as you can see, look for your trackers, and I'm looking around. I'm gonna press trick. I'm gonna press grip and trigger at the same. Oh, grip. Looks like it's grip now. Okay, before it used to be grip and trigger. 
Uh, now, as you, I can see, I brought it over with me using my left stick. I am now going to use my right stick to bring it up. Now, we're getting a little closer. Now, I'm going to press uh, grip again. I'm going to adjust it. Press it again. Bring it up. Now, bring it back to me. And now, as you can see, there should be one on your stomach. There should be two at your feet. Just bring it up. Oh, I need to redo that. Sometimes you can mess things up. Don't worry. Happens sometimes. So just go back, recalibrate. You can do automatic calibration, but it tends to be a bit buggy sometimes. So I recommend sticking with manual calibration if you can. Okay, there we go. Just... Okay, bring that closer. Is that alright? Okay, that's it. And as you can see, the virtual vibe trackers are basically where my feet are. Um, yeah, there you go. So now, I'm just going to go to Steam VR. One's VR chat, and I'm going to close my VR view because it will destroy my performance. And I'll see you in VR chat. All right, we are loading into VR chat, and I've got my menu open and seeing that my trackers are still tracking me. I'm just going to recalibrate myself. There we go. All right, well, so. As you can see immediately if you load into... Okay, wow. Uh, as you can see, if you load in, like, move your legs and things like that, uh, things are not happening. First thing you need to do, go to your settings and calibrate your height. So, for example, I'm set to six foot because that's how tall I am. You can go by arm span. Measuring your arm span. So, obviously, it thinks I'm 5'8", but that's not accurate. I'm going to go by height. And set myself to six foot. And now the next thing we're going to do is go back to the launch pad and click calibrate FBT. Now, as you can see, we've got a tracking point here and two tracking points down by the feet. Now, I recommend if you want the best accuracy on your tracking, well, for your uh, calibration, just keep your head straight, put your feet, well, put your hands up, and you'll notice that immediately you've aligned yourself up. And I'm just going to. Pull the triggers, and um, you now lift your leg. And just like that, we have tracking. Now, as you can see, if we stop still, things aren't great. But if you hold, I think it's grip, trigger, and mute. Tracking is disabled. Do it again. And now tracking's re-enabled. So yeah, grip, trigger, mute. Disable tracking. Grip trigger on mute. Tracking stats working. As you can see, it's not working like on them too. It's got to be grip trigger mute or stuff like that. But yeah. Uh, now, I would recommend your tracking. As you can see, sometimes it will be glitchy. But if you want to keep high less of that glitchiness, um, I just recommend you move around a bit and um, you can actually kind of hide that glitchiness a bit. Um... There was something in the K2VR, uh, the old application, where you could actually smoothen out the tracking or just, like, make it, like, real-time tracking and things like that. You could smoothen it out with uh, API filters and things like that. So, i like to add on to the statement I said earlier about Connector VR, the former app, uh, before Amethyst was a thing. Uh, so, if you really want the old app, which I kind of do myself, go ahead and go to the GitHub repository of K2VR and uh, go to repositories and scroll down until you see I think it's connect to VR and then yes and then you see here K2EX 0.9.1 release click the K2EX.zip and when you download it you will get this extract the file which I have done so I'm going to go to my desktop 
and here it is and if you want to use the uh, if you want to use connect to VR please well if you're using the connect uh, one please use connect v1 process or if you got the second one connect two uh, connect v2 process but yeah and plus well if you have a connect PS uh, well PS move obviously you click PS move process but yeah if you want to keep connect to VR here you go just please run connect v1 process if you have the v1 or the v2 if you got the v2 connect I just thought I'd let you know great to know kind of cool so you know what let's turn the uh, stream camera on and um, yeah there we go as you can see tracking considering that it's from a connect is um, not too bad. You can cross your feet over slightly, but that's better when you sat down, really, like crossing your feet. But considering this is actually one to one, foot, I can put my foot out here, all the way out here. Now, this is taking advantage of the depth sensor and the connect, so you can actually do things like this. <coughs> things like that. Oh, God, I nearly hit my server rack. Um. <laughs> But yeah, this is it. Connect tracking. What do you think? But yeah, like I said, sorry, um, it's going to glitch out occasionally because uh, if you're going to a weird angle, it doesn't really work that well. But yeah, I can lift my rear leg up. If I do like a weird angle, maybe it can kind of see that. Yeah, it's sometimes it's a bit glitchy. Okay, there we go. It's a bit better. But yeah, it can't really see behind you unless you move in a weird angle, then do it. Which now it can. But I do recommend for tracking, just keep looking forward at the um, cam. Well, keep looking at the connect. Obviously, how I do it is that I stick my hand outside of the uh, barrier of the, my Quest 2. And then I know where the camera positioned is. Because I have a little indent right here to signify that this is where the connect is. And I always look this direction. But yeah. Tracking. If you're just doing like simple movements and things like that. It's actually not too... I mean walking. As you can see. I mean it's not great. If I walk back here then yeah things will start to glitch a bit. But if you can't try and stay in the barrier. Things like that. It's... Actually, kind of, it's almost one to one, which is kind of impressive for a really old connect. But yeah, that's basically it. Hopefully, this tutorial has basically helped you set up your connect. Like I said, if you have any problems with your connect, I can't really help you because, uh, based off your issues, they're going to be completely different to what other people have had. But yeah, see if. Um, I'll see you next time. Hopefully, I don't have to answer your problems, but based on the issues that I've had and solved is what I've told you. Goodbye.